what's happening, and welcome to the second part of our Sony A7S III versus Red Komodo for cinematic real estate tour video shootout. Both these cameras I've used a lot over this past year. Uh, if you haven't yet seen part one, I'd encourage you to first do that, and I'll put a link right there for you. So a quick recap, in part one we went over the features of the A7S III and of the Komodo, as well as strengths and weaknesses as they relate to shooting real estate. The A7S III comes out on top for its focusing system and efficient workflow on site, while the RED comes out on top with its fantastic image and truly world-class RAW codec, making post-production a breeze compared to the Sony. Here we are in part two, and it's decision time. Which of these cameras will I, personally, primarily use going forward. I and my team shoot about 80 property videos per year, so systems matter. Before we get into that though, there have been a couple comments, good comments, left on the first video that I thought best to address. The first one is something that inevitably comes up every time I have a comparison where the A7S III is mentioned. And I've actually addressed this before, and that's the A7S III's ability to shoot ProRes RAW through an Atomos recorder. So there are a couple reasons why I didn't bring this up in the first video. The first of which is that we are framing this as a quick workflow, which is what real estate videos are. They have to be quick because they are not each of them going to make you a lot of money. So more stuff hanging on your rig just has a tendency to complicate things. So to be fair, if we were going to bring up any advantage gained by shooting ProRes RAW on the Sony, we'd also need to talk about the Raveneye LiDAR focusing system available for the DJI RS2. That's the gimbal that I use most often which does work on cine lenses and would certainly benefit the Komodo. But again, extra stuff doesn't reconcile with quick workflows. The other reason I didn't bring up the ProRes RAW being an advantage for the Sony is simple, and that's because it just isn't. For instance, still, not all NLEs have the same capabilities in working with it. It's the same log curve with nearly identical dynamic range as the 10-bit all-eye codec because that's really the limitation of the sensor. You do get some more color latitude because it's a 12-bit RAW, not a 16-bit. Look it up, I'm not going to go into it here. But at the expense of noisier footage, no active steady shot, no gyro data, no in-body lens distortion compensation, the files are much larger. In my eyes, it's just not worth it. So, moving on, because the best use of the A7S III for real estate video is shooting the 10-bit all-eye internal codec. The other comment I wanted to address was one asking about file size, which is a great thing to bring up and one that I probably should have brought up in part one, and it's a fitting segue into our decision. The Sony A7S III will be my primary cinematic real estate tour video camera going forward, with one caveat, and we'll get to that. You see, my specific situation is that I shoot Sony bodies for my stills work, which I do even more of than video. So having the A7S III on site at a job where we're doing both stills and video mean means I only have to concern myself with one lens mount and set of lenses, one type of battery, one type of media, everything uses the same support gear. It's a decision of logistics. And adding to that is that the A7S III is so much faster handling than Komodo. And the files are literally a quarter of the size of Komodo's raw files. Also, the Sony has IBIS and frame rates fast enough to slow down without having to warp stabilize the shakes out of it. With the RED, I'll typically shoot 6K at 2.4 to 1 aspect, which is a widescreen standard, 
because I can shoot 50 frames, but it'll be letterboxed top and bottom, which I actually like, I don't mind that. I think it's a cool look. Now, this wouldn't be at all possible if the A7S III wasn't able to put out great looking footage. And while its footage is not nearly as great looking as Komodo's, it's good enough. Which brings us to another comment left on the first video. And that's the commenter's opinion that real estate agents aren't able to discern the difference in quality between a graded red image and a graded Sony image anyway. And while there may be a little truth to that, to make that assumption generally will be your undoing, <laughs> especially when you start shooting luxury properties, which leads us to the caveat that I mentioned with using the A7S III primarily. Luxury properties and builder clients. I will continue to shoot on the red for a couple different reasons. Firstly, I'm getting paid more for those projects, so I don't have to run as fast. I can slow down, get it done with the red. And secondly, consistency is very important, especially to builders. And if you can crank out consistent looking videos with the Sony working on the back end with R3D gives you even more of a safety net that the Sony just can't give you. Add to that, the red footage just looks crazy, right out of camera. So one commenter opined that the Sony footage in my last video didn't look graded, but the red footage looked much more graded to a cinematic look. So what's funny about that is the reality is that the clips that I was playing are the exact opposite. So you really have to work at Sony footage to make it look good. But the red pretty much comes out looking like that. You define your highlight, knee, and slope within the IPP2 uh, workflow, throw a 709 LUT on it, and that's it. Really. Okay. So in conclusion, I will use both cameras for different clients and projects, but the bulk of it will be done on the A7S III. As much as I've slammed that camera for having a mediocre image, and I definitely have done that, it is still arguably the fastest working mirrorless style video camera that exists. And that pays huge dividends with running on fast turnaround work like real estate video. I hope you got something from this comparison series. Leave some comments below letting me know what you think of these two cameras and of this conclusion. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Well, I'm in the storm, couldn't come back home, yeah.